Hello class, you are all welcome to today's lecture. A happy new year to you all. And I welcome you to this new academic year. I believe that so far it has been good. You have warmed up or you are warming up into the semester. And already we are starting our lectures this week. Okay, so I'm taking you through the course statistical methodology with a course called NLB 219. And my name is Eunice Frimpong. And I'm pleased to be a facilitator for this course in this semester. In this lecture, I will introduce you to the course outline, which is the objectives that we will have and we will set before us hoping to finish up and upon which we will be assessed in the form of mid-semester exams, end of semester exams, quizzes, class assignments, projects, and any other. So allow me to introduce to you the course outline as I share my slides with you. So here we have it, the course title, the course code, my name, my department, and today's date. So we are dividing this course into four different parts. We will look at it in four sections. So we'll have the first, second, and third section, and we'll tackle them accordingly. So for the first part, which is part one, we'll be looking at collection of data. And then we'll move on to part two, which will lead us to look, look at presentation of numerical information. And then we will move on to look at some descriptive statistics. And then we will finish up with probability theory. All right, so you may or may not have heard some of these words before, but it is not a problem. That is why you are studying it. So I wanted to, have an open mind and be ready to learn all you can and ask all the questions you could possibly ask to give yourself an opportunity to understand this course. So we will begin with part one. And according to how it's been labeled, it means the section one to four make up part one, all right? So we are looking at part one now. And in part one, we will look at, we will try to define statistics, and then we will look at the types of statistics. We have two types, which we refer to as descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. And then we'll look at some limitations there are in studying or applying statistics in any field of, of studies. We'll move on to look at some of the sources of statistical data. Okay, so there are a number of sources. We have the primary and the secondary sources. We have by census or survey. And then we can also look at population and sample. And we will look at internal and external secondary data, which will fall under secondary data. It's just a subgroupings under secondary data. The third section, we will be looking at sampling. So under sampling, we want to understand the reasons for sampling. We will look at what a sampling frame is, and then we will explore some of the probability methods of sampling. And then we'll look into some of the errors we encounter when we are embarking on sampling. And then on we go to questionnaire design. Maybe some of you have heard of the word questionnaire before, and that would be good. If you haven't, it is not a problem you will get to learn about questionnaires and hopefully how to design them and apply them in your field of work. From five, section five to seven is part two, which is about presentation of numerical information. So we will start with classifying data, how data is classified, and there are a number of ways that data is classified. 
we look at the source, we look at measurements, we look at precision, and then we look at number of variables. And the sixth section, we will look at skills of measurements, the various skills of measurements or levels of measurement that we have. And we are talking about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Mind you, this section is likely to move to join, and there has been a review in trying to review the notes. I have moved it to join the first section. So you are likely to see this in the first part and not as you are seeing it here. So you expect this kind of change as we progress in our studies. Then we will look at data presentation. And if you are somebody who loves graphs and drawing, I think this will be, this will be a very good time for you because we'll be looking at some of the ways that data is presented pictorially or graphically. So we'll be looking at histograms, bar charts, and other ways that we present data so that we will not just see figures, but we will see graphs and the nature of our data will come out clearly to us in the form of pictures, in the form of graphs and tables, okay? So that is what this section will be looking at. We'll have data that, we'll look at the different forms of data, how um, the different forms that we present data. Sometimes we present, we present them as raw data. Sometimes they are presented as grouped data. Sometimes they are ungrouped and all of that. If you've heard of the word frequency table before, then you, you it's, it's all fall under this. Okay, we'll be looking at frequencies and many other aspects of this data presentation. The next session we are looking at, we are now at part three, okay? So at this point, hopefully this will be somewhere in the middle of the semester, we will be considering descriptive statistics. And under descriptive statistics, all we are trying to say is we want to describe the data that we have to make bring out the meaning of it to us. So we'll be considering things like the mean, the mode, variance, range, skewness. All of these things are statistic measures that help us to better understand our data. So when we get there, we'll delve into it. At this point, we are at part four. So it means we are ending the course already. All right, so here is where we look at probability theory, okay? Probability and statistics go together. So we will consider what probability means, um, the various definitions under probability, the various sections and independence, the, the various features of probability like mutually exclusivity, independence, conditionality, and many others. We want to understand what sample space is. We want to look at what an event means, what a set means, and we we'll maybe look at Venn diagrams and how data is presented, all right, in the form of a Venn diagram as well to give us more understanding. And then we'll also consider some counting techniques, okay? Counting techniques. These are techniques that help us to sometimes organize ourselves better, okay? So we will have um, accounting techniques such as permutation, and then we also have combination. And we'll look at other forms of counting techniques like sampling without replacement, sampling with replacement, and on and on. So I mentioned conditional probability, I mentioned independence events, and we'll look at that, okay? And then still under probability theory, we'll consider some probability distributions. Now under probability theory, there are a number of probability distributions, okay? So it's, these are ways of presenting a data in the form of data and the likelihood of that particular data. So a distribution is simply a, um, a list of data, data points and their likelihood of happening, okay? So we'll look at the various forms of probability distributions. We have the discrete distributions and we have the continuous distributions. Under discrete distributions, we'll look at binomial distribution, but before that, you need to know Bernoulli distribution before you can understand binomial distribution. So we'll consider Bernoulli first, and then we'll look at binomial distribution, okay? Then we'll move on to look at Poisson distribution, which is also under discrete 
distributions. And then finally, we will consider only one type of continuous distribution, which is the normal distribution. And that would be the end of the course, which after which you will have to prove your understanding by writing the end of semester examination. So I want to thank you for staying with me to go through the course outline. The next lecture we'll be looking at, we'll start with the part one, which is collection of data and we'll dive into it. All the best. <laughs>